Okay, so today's lesson is on volume of prisms and cylinders. We're talking volume now, which is different than the stuff we've been doing before. Circumference and perimeter, which were in one dimension, um, finding the distance around an object. Um, those units were not square, they were just plain old centimeters or meters or millimeters because they were just in one dimension. In area, you had you know triangles and rectangles, and you had to find the base times the height that was in two dimensions, so the units had to be squared, the little two, centimeter squared, millimeter squared, that kind of thing. Volume is different, it's in three dimensions. So the units instead are cubed. Cubed means little three like that. And so when someone's asking you to find the volume of a certain shape, they're kind of asking you, how many cubes could you fit in that shape? Or how much say you know if we're talking about a liquid um, how much water or milk could you fit in that container in that case you would probably use milliliters or liters so uh, in math we're gonna deal pretty much exclusively with uh, meters and centimeters cubed um, in science you notice that we did use, use uh, milliliters and liters and there is a unit that converts or a way to convert uh, liters and milliliters into centimeters cubed and meters cubed but that's for another time so again, bottom line, when you have volume questions, the units are cubed, cubed, the little three. The formula for volume is a little, well, you could memorize um, a different formula for each shape, but I find this general formula um, works for every single shape. Uh, but it's not as straightforward as the other formulas that we've done so far. So here it is. The volume you find by taking the area of the base, multiplying it by the height. So whatever area that you find that is the base of that shape, you'll find the area of that multiplied by the height of the entire object. Now this may require you to flip the shape around to get the uh, appropriate base. So an abbreviation for that, just let's just agree to use an abbreviation. V for volume, BA will stand for base, area, and then H for height. So, using this formula, let's find the area of this cylinder. So, um, again, volume equals the base area times the height. The base here is a circle. So, we're going to have to find the area of this circle and multiply it by the height of the entire thing. So, using our good old FWA formula, and the work is V for volume, we don't know, so we leave it as V. The base area, we need to find the area of this circle. We have to know the formula for the area of a circle. It is pi r squared, which you can hopefully remember, or remember from before, times the height. So that's our formula for a cylinder, finding its volume. Subbing in the numbers, V we don't know, pi is 3.14, the radius is this, halfway across radius, 30 centimeters. Don't forget to square it. Multiply by the height of 120. Okay, we uh, punch this in first, before we just randomly punch and go this times that times that times that. We have to remember we have to do this first, bed mass. So we don't go 3.14 times 30, we go 30 squared first. 30 squared is 900 times 120. Okay, now from there, when you punch that times that, you should get 2826 times the 120 and you're going to get a final answer being 339,120 units are centimeters and remember it's volume so it's cubed so that is our final answer for volume of the cylinder <coughs> people are always going to think, oh, I have a huge answer here, I'm probably wrong. No, expect huge answers, because we're multiplying in three dimensions. You're going to multiply, then multiply, and multiply. You're going to get big answers uh, 
for the most part, even especially if you're starting with um, big values. Okay, now we have the volume of this. Some of you may look at this and go, oh, I know what the formula is. It's length times width times height. And you know what? Go ahead. If you like to use that formula, go right ahead. Um, you can use volume equals length times width times height, which will be 5 times 3 times 4. Um, and you would get the answer. Using our formula of base area times height, just to be consistent and you always using the same formula over and over and over again, here's how you you would do it. It's nothing harder. It's, it's the exact same thing. The base here is this. So you want to find the area of that base shape, which is a rectangle, and multiply it by the height. So we have to remember that the area of the this base shape, which is a rectangle, is base times height, multiplied by the height of the entire thing. So we have the base, which is 5, the height of the base, which is 3, times the height of the entire thing, which is 4. Now, this gets you the exact same thing as length times width times height. And if you want to use that, go right ahead. Length times width times height gets you the same answer, 5 times 3 times 4, which uh, gives you 15 times 4. And your final answer being 60. In this case, it's meters cubed. So again, you could use, if you want, length times width times height. We did back when we did science, and you can use it here. But again, that only works for uh, rectangular prisms or cubes. <clears throat> but this formula also works as well. So either way, you'll get the same answer. Okay, a triangular prism like this. Um, so volume of the base area times the height. Now, you might think, okay, the base is this rectangle right here. In that case, you'd actually be wrong. And this is where there is some confusion with, with, with this formula. When I mean base area, sometimes we have to flip the shape around. It's the shape that kind of stands out. And with the shape that stands out to us in this figure here is a triangle. So you want to find the area actually of this triangle and multiply it by the height. So this is going to be our base area. Even though it's not on the bottom, it's not the base right now, we'll flip it around and that will act as the base. If you do it the other way and use this, rec uh, use this rectangle, isn't, you're not going to get the right answer. So we find the area of this. So the base is a triangle, and if you remember the volume, or sorry, area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. Again, that height is just the height of just the base, times the height of the whole thing. So this is our formula for the rectangular, or sorry, triangular prism that we have here. We sub in numbers. The base of this triangle is 4. The height is 2 divided by 2 times the height of the entire thing. And again, we flip this shape around. When we flip it around, making this the bottom, this is the height, 5 centimeters. Okay, so we punch this all in. Um, 8 over 2 times 5, which is the same thing as 4 times 5. Gives you a final answer of 20 centimeters cubed. That is your final answer. Done. Now, some of you may think, isn't, like when we went from uh, area of a rectangle or square to area of a triangle, we just went, for a rectangle was base times height. For a triangle, we just divided it by two because a triangle is half of a, <clears throat> of a rectangular square. Could we not do the same thing with a triangular prism? Could we not just go 
with a rectangular prism length times width times height and divide it by two. And you know what? You can, not for every single triangular prism, but you can and you could for this one. So you could just go length times width times height or take these three numbers and divide it by two and you would get the same answer. Because here, five times four, 20, 20 times two is 40, 40 divided by two gives you the exact same 20. Okay, so again, there are ways around it. And whatever formula that you like that works best for you, you go ahead and use it. I'm just showing you this because it is consistent. It's the same formula over and over and over again. Okay, um, and speaking of triangular prisms and where that formula may not work for you, this is our skill testing question. You have to answer or try to find the volume of this object um, before you can get the worksheet. So. <clears throat> Again, what I've done is flipped the triangular prism around for you and made the triangle the base. So this is the base. Um, this is the height, and you got some other numbers here as well. So if you could have that done, show it to me with the notes all done and have the correct answer, you can proceed to the next worksheet. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.